Hi everyone, this is Tiffany. In this video, we will talk about heap overflow vulnerabilities. Heap overflow, as I said, is to overflow the structure of heap. However, heap overflow is very different from stack overflow. So I hope that from this video, you will have a better idea of heap overflow vulnerabilities and especially how to take advantage of that vulnerability and attack. And of course, the purpose of this is not really teaching you how to attack other machines or other vulnerable services. The purpose is that I'm hoping that you can use this technique to prove your future defense in the sense that after you find a vulnerability, you'll be able to know how severe it is by proactively defending it and also try to attack it to the proof the existence of the vulnerability. All right, now let's start. Remember that in previous video, we talk about double free vulnerabilities. So the core idea of a double free vulnerability is that you wanna free a chunk for twice so that next time when you alloc a chunk, you will be able to get one copy of the chunk and then from there, you can edit the information. You're also adding the information for that chunk that still remains in the free list. And because of that, you will be able to manipulate the heap metadata and you will be able to malloc a victim object from which you will be able to do arbitrary read or write. The idea of heap overflow as similar in double free or say use after free in a sense that it still wants to change the metadata stored in a free chunk. However, I would say it's much simpler than double free or use after free because all you need to do is to overwrite a chunk that lives before the free chunk. So the core idea is that you want to overflow the chunk so that you will be able to touch the content for the other chunk. And if the chunk has been freed, which means that the chunk has been you know, inside a T cache bin, then you will be able to change the metadata stored in the chunk. For example, as I shown here in the memory layout of two chunks, suppose that we have two chunks, one is called chunk zero and the other is called chunk one. And let's assume that chunk one has been freed. That's why if you look at the diagram, you see that chunk one is now in the freight, in the uh, T cache bin. So the idea is that if chunk zero is still under use, and then if you know there is a vulnerability of heap overflow, which means that there's no boundary attack when you added this chunk, then you can just write and then you can overflow the chunk of zero and then you'll be able to touch chunk one. So you can go all over the right, go to the part of chunk one, and then you can even change this part, which will locate, which stores the location of the next free chunk. In this case, if we overwrite this part and then we replace it with the address of a victim memory, then after we do two times of malloc, in the second time, we'll be able to get victim address. And from there, we will be able to do arbitrary read and write. More specifically, let's assume that we are at the start of a function or say a program, and then we haven't had any heap or any chunk allocated or freed. In this case, we wanna firstly allocate two chunks one is chunk zero and the other is chunk one. After that, we want to free the second chunk, which is chunk one. The reason why we want to free chunk one instead of chunk zero is because we want to make the second chunk, which is the one that lives in higher address, make that free so that when we overflow the available chunk, we'll be able to touch the heap metadata. Therefore, we want to free chunk one. And after that, we're going to add it chunk zero and we're going to overflow the right chunk zero to this particular part of chunk one, which is the, you know, the second 
eighth byte of chunk one. And then we're going to change that to victim. In this case, we will be able to link chunk one to a victim location. And then if you look at the beans, you'll be able to find that in the tcache bin, chunk one will have a next chunk, which is victim. After that, it's going to be similar to use after free and double free, which is that we're going to malloc the chunk again with the sign of hex 20. So we'll be able to get chunk one. And then we're going to do malloc again. In that case, we will be able to get object victim. From there, then we can do arbitrary read and write. Now let's work on the demo of heap overflow together. I'm going to show the source code of Jim again. And here you will be able to see that we already add those conditions to bound the attack of double free and use after free. So in this two parts, it says that for added, if the pointer has been freed, then we should just return. We will not allow any added of a pointer if the pointer has been freed. Similarly, for double free, we're going to have this additional condition where a pointer will not be able to free twice. When we, you know, about to free a pointer, we're going to check if the pointer has been freed. And if so, we're going to just return from here. So now let's going to work on the overflow vulnerability. Similarly, I will still have those utility functions. And then I'm going to remove the part of lunch attack. And we're going to work from over there. Let's firstly start to write the sudo code, write those steps down. So remember that the first thing that we're going to do is to malloc two chunks. After that, we want to malloc, sorry, we want to free the second chunk. And we want to remain the first chunk because that is the chunk that we're going to use to overflow in order to change the metadata stored in the second chunk. So we need to free the second one. And because we are going to start with zero, the index of the chunk is going to start with zero. So we're going to say here, free the chunk with index of one. Next, we are going to free chunk. So we want to free, oh, actually, we already freed, sorry. So next, actually, what we need to do is to overflow the chunk. So we want to overflow chunk with index of zero. And here, you need to pay a little more attention, which is, what is the value that you want to overflow for this chunk, right? So if you still remember the picture that I draw before in the slides, you can also just like go back to the video, you will, Remember that for us, since the the chunk of the size is uh, gonna be hex twenty, I'm gonna just use the minimum, uh, you know, t cash chunk. Then the size is going to be, um, you know, twenty. But actually, that's the entire chunk size. So you, so you want to change that first. That is hex twenty minus eight. So eight is the first eight bytes of the chunk. And we know that that is the part that always just like store the size related information of the chunk. So we're going to remove that. We know that by the time that we start to write the chunk, we actually start from the eighth byte of the actual allocated chunk. So the size is that We want to have size is equal to hex 20 minus 8, 
And now we're going to start to overwrite the chunk of one. And then in this case, we need to first just remain the size. You know, that is the part, um, you know, of the, uh, of the uh, index of one, those specific chunk. The first part, which is the rightmost part, which is the size. So we want to keep it as what it is. We can keep it as um, 21. Let's do. And after that, we need to have 0, 0 times 7. Because if you still remember the first 8 bytes of a chunk, the last part, like the last byte right now for Tcash is the size of the chunk. And the rest of the bytes is going to be just 0. Now let's continue. Then we need to put a victim object. And this time, I'm going to choose another victim object, which is free. You can still use malloc. But now I'm just changing a little bit, make it more diverse. So I'm going to use the, you know, the location, the got location for function free. All right. And then after that, we want to allocate chunk again. And this is going to be for chunk that we already free. So it is chunk one, and then it is with index of two. And again, this is going to be our victim with the index of three. Good. So at this point, we should be able to get a allocated chunk at this location of victim address. And then we're going to add it. So we want to added the chunk of three. Uh, we want to fill in the, you know, the um, value, which can be the winning function. Fill in the winning function. And then in the end, we're going to trigger the vulnerability. And because we're using free now, this time I'm going to trigger the vulnerability by calling free. Nice. Now let's just fill in those steps using our code. malloc to chunks, right? And then we're going to free the chunk with the index of one. And then we want to overflow it. Okay. Here we need to be a little bit cautious. Let's first generate the content first. So here is actually content, right? So we have content and then we want to put some random value. I'm just put a here. It's some random value with the size. So this is like the padding that will fill um, the chunk uh, with the index of zero. And starting from this part, those are the overflow part, which already write. All right. So then we need to do add it P zero with the content. Now let's continue. We need to do two times of malloc, right? And then now we'll be able to control the third chunk, like the chunk of victim. So we want to add it again with the index of three. And now we're going to replace the content inside there with the winning function. So it's going to be e.symbols.win. Or you could just use symbol. Yep, that also works. Oh, symbols, sorry. Actually, I need to do this because symbols is a dictionary. And then uh, we need to wrap this in 
64-bit and DNS format. And then in the end, we want to trigger the vulnerability by calling free. So I'm going to just send the command. You can do like free with whatever, um, whatever chunk, unless um, that the chunk has been free before. Because remember that we already add a specific check for double free. So now let's take a look at those chunks that we already have. Zero is still available. One is already freed, and we still have, actually we have zero and two and three. So any value other than one should work. And then we just do some line printing and we should be able to get the winning function and the winning message. Now we add the uh, prolog, which will help us to print all the message that we have. And then let's run this on the left hand side. Good, we got the winning message. 